Welcome one and everyone to this week's episode of Scotch and Smokings. All right, one down. Any others? No. Episode 154. That's right, this is the 154th episode of Scotch and Smokings, making it 154 times as epic as the very first one. And 155 times infinity more epic than no scotch and smoke rings at all, which of course it makes mathematical sense. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn here as always. As the very first one. With my suspender set to Maximum Stun, that is correct. We have a fantastic show for you today. We have wonderful things to talk about, wonderful things to show off, and most importantly, wonderful things to imbibe and otherwise consume. Today I am drinking some Scoresby, very well, uh, very rare blended scotch whiskey. Uh, it's a hot day here in Seattle. It's July, and we had fireworks yesterday because it was the 4th of July today, of course, being the 5th of July. And as is the case when July rolls around, things tend to get a little hot, and as you can see, my ice, even though I already popped it in the glass, has already started to melt. So we don't want to dilute the scotch any more than we uh, absolutely necessary. Let's drink off the excess water real quick. And now we're ready to pour. You uh, need to realize that this is one of the most important aspects of the program. If you miss the pour, why, you, you may have missed it all. Wow. I totally didn't spill any all over my keyboard. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's see. I haven't had scotch in a while. When was the last time I had scotch? Last time I did this show, I think. Very, very tasty. And of course we have with us today our electronic pipe. Well, thank you everybody for coming this week. Last week, of course, we did the show as scheduled, but it was under nefarious circumstances. I have spent a very long time uh, in the hospital, but it's good thing. Uh, the good news is that we are all home, safe and sound. Everyone is hunky-dory and perfectly legit, so to speak. So thank you all for your well wishes and your prayers. They came in very handy, and everyone is feeling fantastic. So thanks, ladies and gentlemen. We have a great show tonight. We have, of course, fan art to get through, because many of you are creative individuals very creative individuals, and so you have been sending your fantastic fan art. What? Oh, okay, I am busy eating, says, I miss the variety with, of the pipe, but I understand the baby and such. No, I, yeah, it's true. I, I am smoking uh, my electronic pipe, which I tend to be have, have smoked on, a, on an occasion. Uh, but I won't always be smoking my electronic pipe on camera. There will be times when the baby is away or in another room, for example, where I will pull out a gentlemanly cigar and uh, some other some other combustible shadow class says I'll join the bit it will be over soon really all right hold on let's let's ask Google when does the mist of Pandaria beta end it'll be at least six months after the beta finishes before mist of Pandaria is released wait wait what no that's not true. Uh, okay, let's let's try this. When does Mists of Pandaria release? No one knows. All right. Um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I, I I can't answer that question for you, but you should rest assured that we have fan uh, plenty of time. The game will be set September to November. That's the release around August. The game is not going to be released in August, really? I don't think so. Anyway, the, the reason that this is... The, the reason that this is a subject of note is because I have Mr. Pandaria beta keys to give away, and I'm trying to come up with a clever and creative way of doing so. Um, I, it has been a couple weeks since I told you all that I had the keys, and I still haven't done anything yet, so... I'm going to have to figure out something really quick before the beta is over. Don't worry. Rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, this will be done for you and only for you. Uh, do not hesitate to have confidence in me. 
I'm busy eating says probably 2014, yeah. If I had to guess, that would be the case as well. Alright, I'm going to show off the fan art you guys have created for me this week. If I can get... Come on, Twitch. There we go. Uh, so this was submitted by Autumn. Uh, oh, and you can't see it when I do it this way? Alright. How about that? Still can't see it on my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, you can. You can see my screen. Great. So this is... Uh, this was submitted by Autumn, and it says Panda versus Panda. So I hear the horde is getting pandas. Good thing we could use new bear rugs. Um, <laughs> I love the violence towards pandas in this image. However, you do realize Alliance is getting pandas as well. And the panda exterminators on the horde side, who might also be panda poachers, will be very active in the process of creating their own panda skin rugs. Uh, that's still very clever. I really loved it. Thank you for that. This one was submitted by the venerable Greg Hartung, who is prolific in his submissions to this fine program. And it says, Qualities of a classy Taran's son. An example, Gavin. Number one, handsome hat. Number two, epic beard. Number three, suspenders set to maximum stun. Number four, oversized boxing glove because real men fight with fists only when necessary. And number five, Frosty Beverage Mug. Qualities of a Classy Tar and Sun. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to go give uh, give this the Oxhorn stamp of approval. I like it. Thank you for that, Greg. And then this by Greg. Uh, we, we've seen these masterpieces before, but it, it never hurts to see them again. Hot Dog Burger Patties plus Bacon. Redneck Turtle Burgers. Greatest culinary invention ever? Warning. Hat may not approve. Uh, that quite possibly could be true, but look at that. That is a just masterpiece of pork with pork and more pork. Uh, yeah, that might just uh, have to be the best culinary invention to date. And for some reason, my music has ceased to be. Let's see if I can figure out exactly why. No, it's not that. No, no, it's not that. Oh, it's because I completely closed the window. Well, we can take care of that. Nine taps. Oh, but then that means that the show's going to start playing really quickly. See if I can figure out a way to turn that off. Ah! There we go. Hold on. Oh, no! Dret! The elves inhabiting my machine are causing a commercial to play. No! There we go. <laughs> yes, this is true. We now have a commercial playing. Uh, if you don't see it, then you have been spared. You have been spared the wrath of the commercial. I hate the fact that these commercials just sort of play. Um, nothing I can do about it. Totally. Totally nothing I can do about it. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Ironbark says, do you really, Ox? Do you really? Of course not. Wink. Totally with, well, not within my control. Smoke rings. Ah. <laughs> Goldbreath says, Oh my, I'm so rude. Hello, Ox. Forgot to say hi. Well, hello there, Goldbreath. Pleasure to have you here, as always. Wow. I am busy eating, says the number of long messages in chat. Indeed, very many long messages in chat. Let me see if I can read them. Uh, El Toro Guaco says, I've been having a question in over two weeks now, but every Thursday night, I forget it. My friend, oh, that just breaks my heart. You, if, if you have these questions in your mind, you must not forget to ask me, because I am, of course, the repository of all knowledge anywhere, ever, in the universe. Uh, so it would be a shame to not be able to tap this infinite resource. My pipe battery's dying. All right. Well, 
Here's how you change the battery in an electronic pipe. First, this, you've got your battery charger, which charges the battery. Then you have your battery, which is the battery. Then you unscrew the crystal cap here on the case, which of course houses the battery. Then you move this prong, which keeps the battery in place. Drop out the battery, put in the new battery, push it down, remove the prong, or replace the prong, test it. Nice. And then screw the cap back on. That is how you change an electronic pipe's battery. Scintillating things here at scotchandsmokerings.com. Scintillating. Smoke rings. The next G-Man says, how is Gavin, Ox? Gavin is doing very well. We actually had an amazing day yesterday. So we were released from the hospital yesterday. Clear bill of health. You know, we've got a few follow-up appointments. We did a few of them today, and he's just completely fine. He's crying and pooping 15 different shades of poop, uh, just as he should be. I am very pleased about that. And then we got out at around 1 o'clock yesterday, which gave us plenty of time to go to a huge barbecue at my favorite coffee shop, Jasper's Coffee, which is in SeaTac by the airport. We go there all the time. They had like this big barbecue going on on their deck, and I had burgers and hot dogs and more hot dogs and more burgers. And uh, it was all wonderful. I really can't complain. They even had a vat of little Smokies soaked in sauce. My, the meat on my plate was just obnoxious almost, but I, there is no real way that meat can be obnoxious, so I was having a good time. El Toro Guaco says, don't get used to putting the pipe behind your ear like that ox. Soon as you switch to an actual pipe again, you will burn it. Yeah, that would be bad, I suppose so. This is my thinking posture. Anyway, we had a fantastic food time. And then we went and saw some fireworks. Now, uh, Seattle has a fantastic park called Gasworks Park. And if you check out my Foursquare history, you'll see that I was there last night, just after 10 o'clock when the fireworks started. I mean, we were sitting there on this huge hill overlooking Lake Union while fireworks were shooting off in the sky, set to journey. Could have done without the journey. Now, journey is okay sometimes, but, you know, all in moderation, really. But the, the, the fireworks are beautiful. I'm going to be uploading video of the experience to my new YouTube channel soon, as, long as, as, as well as with pictures. And then we had the fun experience of sitting in traffic for three hours as we tried to get home from the park. We slept well that night, let's just say. Anyway, we, we, we've had a fantastic time. Gavin is doing very well, and we're all happy. Happy family. Lepidus1991 says, although most gentlemen won't eat the middle-class food known as burgers and hot dogs, you and I are the exception. S sir, I beg to disagree. There are many high-class people who, of course, eat caviar and escargot and other forms of Aquarian nastiness. Uh, but then, of course, there are those who value cow and see in the cow the wonder that lies within. I am, of course, talking about its flesh stripped from its carcass and grilled over a fire. Uh, there are many millionaires, for example, who made their millions uh, as cattle ranchers, you know, cooking up cows. So I, I, would, I would beg to disagree with you. I don't necessarily think that hamburgers and hot dogs are plebeian foods. They very well could be high society foods. In fact, they have Kobe beef, right? And isn't Kobe beef supposed to be like a really high-class sort of beef? I really think that it's the same as regular beef. They just charge more for it. But hey, whatever. There, there are, there are high-class types of uh, traditional picnic foods as well. Just saying. El Toro Baco says, it's the funny thing about caviar, in Norway, it's normally a thing to have on bread. 
Not expensive, and not for rich people in general. I, l I don't like it, though. I, I can see why you don't. I like it. I mean, it's basically fertilized fish eggs. Who was the first person to gut a fish and see this lumpy black mass and say, Mmm, that would be good on toast. That, that person just, I don't know. I cannot relate to such people, but that's just me. Rodellin says on Twitter, Ox, have you quit smoking tobacco? I've not attended in a while, and so I don't know why you now use an electronic pipe. Wait, baby? Yeah, all right, so there have been a lot of changes in the Oxhorn life since uh, you have last been here. I am married. I have a beautiful baby boy named Gavin. He's just over three weeks old. Actually, he'll be four weeks old tomorrow. So he's almost four weeks old. And uh, yes, I am now smoking an electronic pipe. I do, of course, still have a collection of fine gentlemanly tobaccos. Uh, in fact, I've got a humidor right here, which I will open so that I can share with you a Cuban. That's right. This is Mark's, not mine, but it's a fantastic Cuban cigar. I also have some other fine combustibles here. So I've got my collection here. I just choose not to use them at certain times, especially if the baby is near at hand. I, w of course, am happy to smoke them at other times when the baby is not near at hand. What? Snowy214 says, Ox, you should do something with your beta keys soon. Blaze will have the new 5.0 patch for the public release. The 5.0 patch... Only people that are not in the beta can go on. Oh, you mean like the public test realm? It's a good point. Loranicus, really? You're really wanting me to ban you? Really, Loranicus? Man, I used to think you were so classy. Man. Well, we'll just have to see. Rodolin says, Welp, my mind has been blown. Uh... <clears throat> I know. Uh, it blows my mind every, at every opportunity as well. Um, are you seeing this? Asks ThunderGod91. Yes, of course, I'm definitely seeing this. I can see all of your chats. Lord Blackband says, Is it alright to smoke with the door open? If I was smoking something that I could set on fire, no, I would have the door completely closed. But seeing as this is my electronic pipe with a brand new battery, which makes me able to blow thicker smoke rings, I'm feeling fairly safe to smoke it with the door open. Tyrion says, Ox, I am watching this from the Netherlands during studying, and I gotta say, I love the show, always watch it if I have to study, and during your show, I always smoke a classy pipe and, some, and drink some scotch. Well, sir, it's a pleasure to have you here. I, I just, one, thing, one of the things I love about this program is it gives me the opportunity to co-mingle with my fellow classy gentlemen and ladies throughout the world who are watching from all places in the world and uh, just so happen to be lighting up their legal and gentlemanly combustible and drinking a legal and gentlemanly imbibable. Um, which is something that most people don't do these days, right? It used to be the taverns were a great social place where you could go to be with your, your fellows and even bring the family and it was safe and fun and gentlemanly and there was no crassness. But nowadays, pubs, for the most part, are just ribald, and I'm not particularly fond of anything ribald. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, what? I don't understand. As Adam says, he has multiple chat pages open, Snizzer, whoever Snizzer is. Sometimes he doesn't get all the questions asked. That's true. I do not see all of them. Gorn says, Happy 4th of July. Pleasure to have you here uh, 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 again, Gorn. Uh, happy 4th of July back at you. I remember that one 4th of July where we were in Berkeley and we went to that park or something and watched the fireworks on the water with Jared and his family. I remember that. That was a lot of fun. I think I bought my penny whistle at that time and my pipe and played and smoked at the same time. It was pretty great. Fox 
Dusty Pandarin says, Paox, the Blizzard just released news that you will be able to make 11 characters on one realm. Will you use the new extra character slots to make a panda for real? Whoa. I don't know if I would ever want to make a panda for real. I just don't know if I have it in me. Like I've never made an elf for real. Or a worgen for real. Or anyone on the Alliance for real. It's just the way, it's just the way I, roll, I roll, you know? Okay, <clears throat> Snizzer asks. And a pleasure to have you here, Snizzer. He says, Oxford, I just started playing WoW, and I got all the recent expansions. What would you choose for a hunter? I am thinking of a Worgen hunter. Uh, well, good sir, uh, many people like the Worgen. That's fine. I'm not terribly fond of how close to furrydom the Worgen are. Of course, now that you have pandas, it's inescapable. Uh, but they do have their human side, and they wear top hats, and that redeems them. Any character that can wear a top hat and do it well has a good side. It definitely has a good side. Uh, Worgen Hunter would be fairly interesting. I mean, they are wolves, right? So wolves tend to hunt innocent creatures. Uh, a, a dwarf hunter, maybe? I don't know, but you want horde, right? What would be a good horde hunter? Hmm. I think a troll would be a good hunter, huh? John Gulbreth Bagley says, uh, so when can we see the classy baby? The classy baby is classily snoozing right now in the other room. Uh, if my wife is watching the show right now and happens to be in chat, uh, maybe she can bring him on in to just show him to y'all really quickly. If not, he'll probably stay asleep for a little while. Because he's a tired guy. He's had a big day. Lots of things to drink. Lots of noises to make. Lots of poo to make. Ah, he has been busy. Busy. Little Fizz says, how does an electronic pipe work? I'll show you. So it has a cartridge in here. And the cart inside the cartridge is a gel. It's basically just water that is in gel form. Now, when the cartridge meets the atomizer, the atomizer vaporizes it and turns it into a water vapor, which then goes back up the shank which looks like smoke. It's really water vapor, but it looks like smoke. And that's how it works. Now some of the uh, gelatin capsules will have nicotine in them, so that the person who smokes the pipe still gets the nicotine fix. Uh, however, the ones that I have purchased do not have nicotine in them. You can also put flavors in them, but mine is flavorless. So it basically just tastes like water. Uber Waffle Mouse says, I hope you have your trusty ban hammer at your side. Indeed I do, however, in the chat we have a number of mods who have their ban hammers ready as well. So whatever they happen to miss, I will happily ban for them. Touchstone says, "Hey Ox, on the Fourth of July, were you perhaps at the Marina Bay? I live right, I live right there near Berkeley in, in El Cerrito. Um, no, sadly, when I went to Berkeley a few, this was a few years ago. I was recounting a tale because Gort was in chat and he was an old coworker of mine, and uh, we went to this Fourth of July thing together. I was, I was talking to him about it publicly to a room filled with hundreds of people. Yeah, I know it was kind of rude, huh? Cheers." Ha! <laughs> 
Foxy Pandering says, Do you ever think your son will use this show later on in life to show moments of greatness of you or moments of hilarity? I'm going to go with both because my philosophy has always been a moment of greatness can be a moment of hilarity. And many hilarious moments are themselves moments of greatness. So the two can sometimes go hand in hand. I'm pretty sure that since I am publishing these to the interwebs, uh, that they will exist for quite a few years. Waffle Mao itself is already five years old. Had I had the boy at that time, he would be five years old and watching it. But right now, he's only four weeks old and has not had the opportunity to watch it yet. But I'm sure my boys, all my children, uh, Gavin and the future ones that are simply twinkles in my eye, <laughs> will have a very fond time watching this program right now and movies like it in the future. Loranica says, Hey, Alex, I've written a program that will create smoke ships for me. I'm going to test it on tonight's show and make my own. All right, but you know what? There is a human element of smoke ships that is inherently appealing to me. If I get the kind of hint that the smoke ship that you have produced <clears throat> is not unique, or if it just doesn't have that sort of oxhorn epicness that every smoke ship should have, I may not be inclined to use it. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be a good experiment. Cool breath. Careful there, buddy. <laughs> Getting a little close to crass here. Autumn says, do you still play Spore? Indeed, I do. I don't play it often. The last time I played it was when I played it here on this program. I've got it in the background if you guys want to watch me play it a little bit later. I'll leave it up to you folks. Maybe we can take a vote. Lorenica says, if I were to start the program right now, it would have to spit out 21,600 ships in time. That's a lot of ships. Don't think I could read them all. Maybe choose one. <laughs> Alright, I shall regale you with a story. That's right, I am a narrator by trade and habit, and so I will regale you with a tale that will tickle your funny bones and reach to the very cockles of your heart. Um, that is a real thing, by the way, look it up. <clears throat> so uh, I was at this barbecue yesterday, and I met all sorts of fantastic and wonderful people. Some of them knew me as Oxhorn, most of them knew me as Brandon, um, but all of them knew that I have a child. Yes, cockles, Diego. Cockles. That's actually part of the anatomy of a heart. You can Google it. Um, no, caruncles are part of the anatomy of a turkey. I'm not going to get into anatomy lessons here. But anyway, I'm talking about this story. Uh, uh, this, you know, I, I go to this barbecue, and they all know that I've got this brand new baby, because I brought the baby, and the baby's beautiful mother, my wife Jody. And um, we were walking around, eating all sorts of bacon and pork. And uh, people were coming up, and they were just like looking at this kid, and they thought he was so cute. And many of them were like, oh, you have a new baby, oh, it's so great, we're so happy for you, etc., etc. Some people, this buddy of mine, looks at the baby, and I see fear in his eyes. Hard to understand, really, but he saw the child, and instead of going, oh, or... Oh, he went, oh, just like that, too. Oh. And uh, he looked at the baby and was like, that's a baby. I'm like, yes, this is a baby. Uh, my friend, would you like to hold this baby? And he goes, eh. and he made those actual motions. Eh. But then, because it's kind of awkward to say no when someone presents you with their child, he goes, all right. <clears throat> So he grabs the baby. He's holding like this, and he's like, it's kind of like, you know the hover hand? 
when you're holding, a, a, if, if as a lonely, pathetic male, uh, you are not used to the company of women, and so instead of actually being a man and putting your arm around the woman when you're posing for the photo, you're nervous, and so you kind of do the hover hand. That's kind of the way it was. He was doing the hover hand with a child in his arms, so he was kind of holding the baby and going, yeah, ah, baby, yeah, yeah. Nervous, this guy. Uh, a little a little nervous and not terribly excited. So he had done his duty, and he had held the baby and gave him back to me, and that, that was it. And I just noticed this, um, I don't know, then he asked me, so, do you feel like you've changed at all? Do you feel like there was a moment in your life uh, after the child was born where you were now a different person? I'm thinking about it, I'm going, no, not really. I just have a child now. You know, another mouth to feed, a young person whose entire future is within my grasp, so I can train him in classiness from a very young age. Uh, no, that doesn't terribly make me nervous, or uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, there was no defining moment after I saw the child where I'm sitting here going, <gasps> I am now a new and completely different per person. And the reason, well, I'll get to that in just a second. So I, th these were the answers that I gave to this guy. And it reminded me of going to work. Like, I went to work the other day, and it was my first day back after having been on paternity leave. The baby is now born. I go to work, and everyone's really happy for me. People are shaking my hand, and, you know, we're having a great time. And one guy comes up to me, and he's like, You're a dad now! Man, you're brave. I'm sitting here going, <laughs> Good grief, the guy's talking as if I just got back from defeating a dragon or something. I just gave, you know, I just fathered, a, sired a child, right? You know, my, my beautiful wife. Uh, it was it was a tough experience, but a wonderful and rewarding experience. Yet it's done millions of times a year. And it has been done billions of times by people throughout the history of mankind. Our species would not be where it is today unless this were a fairly common event. And yet these people with whom I have been interfacing acted as though this was, you know, unusual and scary and intimidating and kind of icky, right? So I've just been meditating on, on these sort of encounters and I've come to the conclusion that there is a state of mind that many of us find ourselves in, especially in this culture, and especially in men. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking specifically towards men right now. We are afraid of growing up. We are afraid of responsibility, and we're immature. And because of that, it changes the way that we interact with each other and the way that we see things. Instead of seeing a baby and all of the responsibility that goes along with him and all of the wonder that goes along with him, instead our eyes go wide and we're terrified and we're like, baby! Oh, I don't think I can handle that kind of responsibility. Oh, I'm terrified about the change in my life. Oh, there's an episode of Futurama, right? There's that uh, that episode where Kif, it's called Kif Gets Knocked Up a Notch. The entire episode was all about how Amy just wanted to be immature and ride her hoverboard and, you know, when she had to put motherhood mode into her calendar after her boyfriend became pregnant. I know, it's a weird space story. Don't worry about it. You don't have to understand it. Basically, when she's about to become a mother, her entire life changes and she flees from the responsibility. I think that there are many people in our society who have become like that, as that is the, that is the modus operandi of their everyday life. And this is becoming the norm. I go to work and I find people who, they want to go out on the weekends and drink and they want to, you know, travel and it's all about them. It's about all about life experiences. It's absorbing new things and new ideas. And while all of that is fine and dandy, there does come a moment where we have to buckle down and say, right, we have a species we have to further, right? This is part of being a mature, responsible adult. We don't shy away from things that uh, demand responsibility because we don't want to be responsible or mature. Instead, we embrace them because that advances us as a human being. The immature person is not a lesser person just because he has to get up at a certain time and pay bills and take responsibility. He has actually got a richer and more rewarding life because he has all of these things. He has a myriad of things that are at his disposal, things that uh, rely upon him rely upon his cognition, rely upon his maturity, rely upon his ambition, or else they fall apart. Which is what we're seeing in society. We have a society of children who are raised without knowing their dads. Because 
fatherhood is intimidating to people because it's hard for people to accept the responsibility of raising a child properly, of being a good husband so that you don't get a divorce, of being a good father so that your, your child actually grows up respecting you instead of saying, oh, that's the guy that paid my mom $300 a month. Ah, you know, that is where we're at today. And that, I think, is why children are seen by the immature as something terrifying instead of something adorable and something to be wished for. Alright, I'm off my soapbox. Uh, instead, let's drink scotch. Cheers, everybody. Bottoms up. Oh, wow. So the entire ch chat was talking about World of Warcraft while I rambled on. D just didn't... wasn't... didn't matter. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, let's talk about Thoughtbot and uh, the latest expansion. No, that's good. It's cool. <laughs> Foxy Pandarin says, You think your kids might carry on your legacy of video making, maybe World of Warcraft, if it is still around? Um, quite possibly. Uh, you know, the, the talents and skills and interests tend to be mapped to our genealogical code. It's quite possible that they will inherit... Uh, some sort of skill set that I have acquired. Who knows? Maybe they'll write books instead. Maybe they'll uh, sing in an opera. Who, who knows what sort of create, creative excretion they will produce. Maybe it'll be video editing. Maybe it'll be World of Warcraft. I'm not sure. Diego says, I am a 43-year-old virgin who likes to go to the park dressed as Darth Vader on helis slashing through the bushes. Hope for humanity. Dwindles. What's Heelys? No, I do not know Heelys. I have no idea what it is. They're pronounced Heelys? Is it some sort of park in New York or something? Is it a, a, an equestrian snack? Rashes says, I'm trying to make you a classy logo for your website. Would you please have a look? Absolutely. Hey, very nicely done. I believe I showed this off at the sh during the show last week. Uh, but it's a ver very nicely done. Gordon says, Heelys are those shoes with the wheel in the shoe that kids roll around on. Ah, ah, that's right. Okay, I am familiar with Heelys. So wait a minute. You're saying that you're a 43-year-old fellow who wears Heelys dressed as Darth Vader? Well, if you took a picture of yourself, you'd be on the front page of Reddit. <laughs> Greg Hartung says, Are you still among... The handful of people that don't own a television, indeed, I am. I do not own a television, uh, and I don't really miss it. I had a television when I was a kid. Not Nothing there I need. Gort asks, how much meat did you eat yesterday, Brandon? Uh, well, it's hard for me to measure, because I was never good at numbers. Being a humanities major, the math that surrounds the amount of flesh, human, not, not human flesh, but animal flesh that I consumed. It's hard for me to quantify, but I had a, a, a patties, and then hot dogs, and then a big vat of little Smokies. I don't know. I had a lot of meat. It was good. Filled me with great, happy feelings. And I'm not even paying for it. You'd think after eating that much meat over the 4th of July, you'd be paying for it in the vestibule? Or rather, the latrine. But uh, not to me. No, I, I, I'm not paying for it. Yet.
The Torah Blanco says two oxen gorge you should meet up and do this again. I miss Beardy and Baldy. <laughs> uh, that's a great idea. We we must do another Wii Game Weekly video review sometime. Um, is he still bald? I don't know. Gorge, I have not seen a recent picture of you. Rodalin says Solox have the glasses just been entirely done away with. Wow, it must have been a very long time since you were last here. I had laser eye surgery over a year ago. Actually, it's been two years, hasn't it? So yeah, I do not no longer I, I no longer need glasses. However, I still have a pair. Um, even though I've got fairly good vision, this helps out a little bit. They don't quite look the same as as my old. Yes, says Gorant. Bald and bearded. Bearded. Kudos to you, sir. Fantastic news. Cheers to that. Cheers to beards. More men these days should be wearing beards. That is my M.O. Rashus asks Oxhorn, is your classy music in a Spotify playlist? I'm sure it is, but I'm actually listening to a free radio station called Radio Dismuke. Just go to Google and type in Radio Dismuke, D I S M U K E, and you'll find it. It's a free streaming radio station. Great music from the 20s and 30s. I love it. I am busy eating, says, I'm sorry, Ox, but I have to leave early. The mistress beckons to me? My goodness. Are you a warlock or something? Gosh, this is starting to get a little scandalous. Well, do what you got to do, my friend. Do what you got to do. Cheers and stay classy, sir. See you next week. Diego423 says, do you still think I'm 43? I'm not. I'm 14. Great. Because 14 still makes wheelies cool. Again, I kid. Come on. I'm just, just giving you a hard time, right? That's just part of the gig here. Scott and Smoke Rings <laughs> uh, Greg Hartung, that's a little politically incorrect, my friend. Uh, I don't even know if I can read that because it's a little... <laughs> <laughs> that is a little politically incorrect. Um, well, I, I, I do feel sympathy for you. There's a plethora of research out there that talks about how a man's beard, his facial accoutrements, are tied specifically to his DNA. That uh, there are just certain races of men who are able, more able, to grow a manly beard like the one that you see before you. Many northern races, for example, are able to sprout uh, these kinds of whiskers. But strangely enough, southern races, like those from Africa, are also equally able to sprout such manly whiskers. Uh, so I don't know it, it, why uh, geographical location has anything to do with it, but um, genes most certainly do. Now there are some certain things you can do to make sure that your face sprouts as many fine and masculine whiskers as the one that's before you. First of all, of course, you need to use scotch. Just dip your finger in some scotch, rub it all over your face, you're good to go. Second of all, testosterone. That's right, testosterone helps. The more testosterone you have, the more likely you are to grow a beard. And frankly, eat meat. I know it sounds ridiculous, but people who eat meat, uh, men at least, who eat meat tend to produce more testosterone. Additionally, and I know it sounds strange coming from me, but maybe work out a little bit, watch your, in your input because you need to lose a little bit of weight. Overweight individuals tend to produce more estrogen than normal weight individuals. So uh, if you lose a little bit of weight, you are more likely to um, sprout the whiskers. And then of course, a regular cleaning regimen. You do not want your pores to get clogged with sebaceous material because many of these whiskers grew from uh, what were once sweat glands. So just make sure you have a clean, a clean regimen going on. Maybe use some sort of facial cleanser to clean all of the sebum from, from, your, from your pores, and that'll open you up to growing more whiskers. Additionally, for some reason, in the summer, men tend to grow longer beards. Their rate of growth speeds up during the summer, so this is a golden opportunity. Try and work on all of these things. Google some more tips on how to grow a manly beard and uh, be sure to, to act on them during the summer while you can take advantage of this season's gr beard growing opportunity. 
Advice. I have it. Rob520 Biz says, uh, finally made it back to another live show. Love it. We gotta see the new episode on your website, like 152 to 153. Uh, absolutely. Scotch and I have all of my recent episodes up there. I don't have 153 up yet. I believe 152 is up. Uh, but I will, of course, get 154, this one, up there ASAP, which does not mean act uh, swiftly, handsome pachyderm, but it, of course, it means uh, as, as fast as possible. Swiftly as possible. Soon as possible. Rasha says, the Ox wanted made a wild form thread in your honor. We gotta check this out. Alright, wild form thread in my honor by Rashes. How many people, uh. Alright, let's. Let's, <laughs> let's take a look at this together, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta see what Rashes has wrought. Okay, Rashes, he says, of all the men of Azeroth, I must say that my least favorite race is an elf. All right, we got the anti-elf anthem here. I'd rather have lunch with a fat ogre than to spend one moment with an elf. And it goes on. Uh, oh, wow. Look at this. Look at all these people. Oh, look at all the elves who are upset and offended. Wow, look at them. They're all upset. You just crossed the line. So much hate. <laughs> this thread needs a well-placed pla uh, platter of chocolate cookies. Uh, this elf thread, hate thread, is pretty boring compared to the old ones. Oh, man. Look how many. Wow. 20. 20 different pages of this. Oh, my goodness. Look at all these guys. So upset at the elf hate. Ah, It just warms your heart, doesn't it? Thank you, Rashes. That was, <laughs> that was fantastic. That made my day. I uh, love it when people take their elves so seriously that it consumes any amount of their life. Haters gonna hate, says Greg Hartung. That would actually make a great meme, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Does the beard keep your face warm, Oxhorn? Asks someone whose name flew off the screen, so I lost it. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, the next G Man asks that. And then Touch Throne says, What is the weirdest thing you've ever found in your beard? People think that this is like a sticky tape thing or something. It just collects things. <laughs> I walk through the air and whoosh, it's a vacuum. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, yes, it does keep my face warm. I've never found it. I mean, it's been a long time since I have been without a beard, so I can't say whether a person without the beard is, has significantly less warmth on their chin. Um, I can say that I don't feel too warm. I I, it's the middle of summer, the sun is out, and I don't feel like my chin is sweating or anything like that. So um, it does not feel uncomfortable, but I'm sure it does keep me far warmer than if I did not have one. Strangest thing I've ever found in my beard? Probably my chin. I have a bizarre one. I do. Thomasina says, Hello, Ox, Nova, and Baby Gavin. Hope you three are all doing well. I hope you guys had a wonderful July 4th. We did. I, I even recorded some of the fireworks that we saw, and I'll be uploading that to YouTube momentarily. Thank you very much. Cheers and bottoms up. Lorenica says, political correctness is for hippies. Indeed, sir, indeed. Well spoken. Shadow Class asks, are you going to be playing Spore? I suppose I could. First, let me present you with that. Ah, it's a bottomless pit. It just keeps going on and on and on. That is trippy. I wonder if your lives have been changed forever. All right, Spore. Um, there we go. So there's Spore. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the sound back on. Let me get some some of the chats back up and see what you guys want to see.
<laughs> yeah, no? Alright. Here we go. Back to sport. Look at all these planetary possibilities. Let's create a new game. Let's choose the creature stage, because I did the other one last time, right? Uh, do I, let's do an omnivore. That's just going to give me more opportunity. El Toro Guaco says banjo solo. Indeed, sir. Nothing wrong with banjo solo. Veronica says, uh, as part of the experiment for the smoke ship program, I will be saying two different smoke ships, one human and one computer. You are on, sir. Let's see if we can uh, tell the difference. All right, it's time for me to create some sort of spore creature. Lepidus of Rune Totem says that my Twitter messages are piling up, but I don't think so. I'm looking at them right now, and I've been uh, answering many of them. Okay, why the lag? It's lagging. I don't know why. Oh, I know, probably because I'm sharing my screen and uploading video and playing music. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see if I can get it going. Snowy214 says, Ox, are you going to record your boys' baby sounds for Mortus's kids for your vids? That's a great idea. I should probably hop on that, shouldn't I? Just to take advantage of the situation while he's still little. It's lagging. I just don't know, guys. It's just taking its good sweet time. Maybe we will not have time for sport today. Oh, bummer. People are already giving smoke ship ideas. All right. No sport today. My computer's lagging. It is actually almost time for the show to end. Uh, seven minutes. So I'll just go ahead and start taking your smoke ship ideas. What are your smoke, sh uh, your smoke ship ideas, ladies and gentlemen? Shadow Class says, My smoke ship will be a true horde and a great panda power beam being destroyed by class, as a preview at least. Lorenicus says, Ox Nova and Baby Gavin in a gem studded bacon hover tank, going from the hospital to an all beef burger joint, shooting immature people with scotch stuffed gnome grenades that turn them into derbies. That's actually really good. I have to admit, that's a fairly decent uh, smoke ship idea. <laughs> El Toro Barco says a cow in a pink tutu dancing on top of the flagpole balanced on some barrels rolling on the deck of a pirate ship near the Car Caribbean while mad pandas are firing burning powder burning bowler hats to burn it all down that's fairly specific Nicely done. Shadow Class says, The power of Oxhorn's true power, with his guild and chat destroying a panda power beam, destroying the panda can returning to Class Bringer and using true power to turn Darnassus into Tarn City. That's a lot of power. <laughs> Ox, Nova, and Gavin in a rainbow riding leather spaceship flying around the moon eating bacon wrapped bacon and killing hippies with epic pecan pie missiles, says Lelanicus. Very well done. Although I'm going to have to call this. Those are both robot generated. You know how I can tell? Because you've got the exact same typos in both. And in the exact same places. Robots! Just saying, Lelanicus.
Ox selling a smoke ship restaurant hybrid as Nova sells and cooks panda pizzas in a plastic panda pie parlor as Morton Stag teach baby Gavin how to pwn, meanwhile Bean ranting about Elf Hayton on WoW. Nice, I like the alliteration there. Rob520 says, have a good night, sir. I wish I wasn't so late to the show tonight, but I'll have to catch the rerun. rerun. Hope your week goes very well. Pleasure, sir, as always. Glad to have you. Baby Zane says, have space whales come out of space and protect our planet from evil pink gnomes that are half demon and shoot rainbows. Wow. You guys, you guys could write fantasy novels. You really could. The Nightly Viking says, Oxhorn Nova and Baby Gavin sitting in sun chairs eating bacon while watching elves do their housework. Then a, hap then a happy bean sprout turns up with the Kraken. Findora says, Ox, Stag, and Mort watching from on top of a bacon ship looking below and the elves and pandas fight each other to death. If any luck, they may wipe each other out. I gotta say, that is a vision I would love to see fulfilled. <laughs> Dark Mind says, Hello, Ox. Greeting from Holland. This is my first live stream of you. I love it. Pleasure to have you here, sir. And no, I will not make any Austin Powers quotes. I totally, I totally won't. I am from Holland. Isn't that weird? I, 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 sorry, sorry. I couldn't restrain myself. Ah, it just happened. I don't, I don't know what happened. I just, I, I feel bad. I'm, I'm genuinely guilty in my soul. El Toro Blanco says, Ox and Gwant reuniting on top of a Zeppelin while they do a fancy bro shake and bounce out into their water where Nova is waiting for them with some lemonade. Fancy bro shake? What's, the, what's, a, what's a fancy bro shake? Tyrion says, Ox, Nova, and Baby Gavin driving on the back of a Kodo, eating bacon and running from angry pandas throwing burning top hats at them whilst Ox throws pecan pies. This is getting me really hungry, guys. It just, it's making me really hungry. Autumn says, Ox, Horn, and a bacon wrapped Zeppelin flying over storm wind and shooting down gnomes at the elves and pandas while Ox, Horn, smokes a pipe and drinks a fine glass of scotch. Also very good. Let's see. Restaurant hybrid. Gem studded bacon hover tank. Nice. Cow in a pink tutu. Also good. All beef burger joint? Getting me hungry. Stumphorn says, now that Ox has quoted gold member, can we refer to him as Faja? I suppose I would deserve that. <laughs> Ox and Stag riding a giant bacon smoke ship, firing at armies of Alliance, panda, Alliance pandas, while the panda hunter joins with Mort to kill all the pandas in Orgrimmar. Nova uses the newly killed pandas to make pizzas. Panda pizzas. Says Ghoul Breath. That sounds delicious. You know what? I'm having a really hard time. I am. They're all so good this week that I just don't know if I can pick one. Because they're all amazing. Ah, this is a hard, hard decision. I'm feeling so indecisive right now. They all incorporate all of my favorite things. Panda hatred, elf hatred, meat, specifically pork, and scotch. 
Maybe I'll have to roll a dice. Alright, rolling the dice. This is how I'm going to do it. I've got my mouse on the scroll bar on the side. I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, while looking aside, and then stop. And then I'll look at the screen, and the one that I see first is the one I'm going to read, alright? They're all so good. Alright, here we go. And... Uh, there are none on I scrolled up too far. All right. Uh, and scrolling down right there. Oh, all right. Here it is. Smoke chip time. Here we go. This is Finduras. There wasn't much smoke in that one. That was half of it. Here comes the other half. There you go. There's the other half. And it was fantastic. It was Ox, Stag, and Mort watching from on top of a bacon ship, looking below, and the elves and pandas fighting each other to the death. And if luck may have it, they would wipe each other out. That was pretty doggone good. He had elves and pandas fighting to the death. What could be better than both of the races I hate dying? And utter violence and carnage. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. There were so many fantastic smoke ship ideas this week. Lorenicus, both of yours were amazing. Gulbreth, you had some awesome ones. It was really hard for me to choose. So, I just let fate have it. And I just rolled the dice. And we had another epic one uh, by Finn. So, thank you all so very much. He, he, I do apologize, he. Anyway, thank you all so very much for coming to this week's episode and for submitting all of your fantastic smoke ship ideas. They were all truly wonderful, and I'll have to do many more next week. Uh, anyway, oh, which was a robot, asks Lorenicus? Both. I think they were both robots. If that's not the answer, then I really couldn't tell. Sorry. <laughs> What's the answer, Ronicus? Which one was really the robot? Because they were all great. A gem-studded bacon zeppelin? How can you not like that? That was fantastic. They weren't? They weren't both robots? All right, which one was it? Which one was the robot? We're on tender hooks here, hooks here, man. You right now, at this moment, number two. Number two was... All right, let me scroll up. Which one was the robot from Ranicus? I just got to know. Which was the robot? Oxenov and Gavin in a rainbow-riding leather spaceship flying around the moon, eating bacon-wrapped bacon, and killing hippies with epic pecan pie missiles? That was the robot? Man, you must have my entire personality down to a, a computer formula, because that was amazing. It really was. I, kudos to you, sir. You wrote a program... That makes smoke ships. I, I, I definitely couldn't do that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 154. Next week is episode 155, which is one week away from episode 156, which is our three-year anniversary. It'll be a fantastic episode. Thank you all for coming, and be sure, my friends, as always, we say here at scotchandsmokerings.com, to make sure that you stay classy.